Hey, it's Jared. Welcome to 2021. I thought now would be a great time to take a look at my Notion setup and how I'm going to be utilizing it going here into 2021 to achieve my goals, stay on top of all the projects and tasks that I have for the different businesses, the different YouTube channels that I run, a lot of things to keep tabs on. And my Notion setup has transitioned a bit, as it always does. One of the great things about Notion is that it's very nimble. I can go and move my data around reorganize and restructure and it feels new all the time so when something isn't working as effectively as I would like it to I could go and make changes and not feel like I'm stuck now we'll talk a little bit about the different sections that I have in here and I have some follow-up videos because I've made some changes to some things and I want to talk about those more specifically but this is an overview of how I'm using notion going into 2021 so maybe you'll come up with a couple of ideas here for your Yourself and know that I will be uh, producing some additional update videos on some of those things specifically. But if there's anything that you want to know for sure or want more details on, make sure to let me know down in the comment section below. So we're looking at HMG OS, which is Hill Media Group OS. That's my digital marketing agency where I do website design, online marketing, all that good stuff. And I have clients and tasks that I need to manage there. I also have projects that sometimes tasks are nested within as well. So I need to keep tabs on all of that stuff. I got extremely busy last year because a lot of businesses that couldn't do business in person went online and so I got really busy, which meant I had tasks coming and projects from a lot of different clients and I needed to keep it organized. Thankfully, my Notion setup was able to handle that and I was able to keep organized and structured. What we're looking at here is my uh, kind of homepage or my dashboard for Hill Media Group. I have two databases, a client's database and a client projects. I've talked about these in previous videos and not much has changed in these areas. Uh, aside from the fact that I do have a dashboard where I can quickly view uh, my tasks, open projects, recent interactions, and then any transactions as far as costs go that I had for a client. So that is easy. And then of course I could jump into those databases and view the client projects and everything there. Uh, go back to the dashboard, go into the client list and view my entire client list, which the client list itself Aside from adding new clients, I haven't really been going into the client entry too much. But what's nice about the projects and the tasks is that they are tied to a client. So if I wanted to go and see all the tasks and all the projects from a client specifically, I could easily go and do that. And I'm going to go more into detail on that as well because new clients that I've been adding in, I've been building out kind of a dashboard underneath that client as well. And it's a great way to get a bird's eye view of everything specific to a single client. So the Hill Media Group OS is where I go when I'm working on those projects. Now for Jer OS, which is Jared OS, uh, if you didn't get that, has the majority of the of the content. There are a couple different pages here and all of the databases that fall under me personally. And of course, some of those tie into professional as well, like my tasks database is in here. Even though tasks can come from pretty much anywhere else from within Notion, my task database is here as well as my interactions log, expenses, and all of that stuff. I felt that it was easier just to keep all of that stuff here because the majority of those areas do tie into my personal life as well, so I wanted to keep it here. This dashboard also has an inbox, an area where I keep track of things that I'm, I'm praying about and being mindful of, uh, my personal projects, and then also recent transactions. So I have a quick and easy way to enter new uh, receipts or transactions, things that uh, occur throughout the week. So one area that I'm working on right now is my focus areas. I get a little sidetracked with ideas and projects, and I need a way to keep that all uh, kind of going and moving forward. So my focus areas here, I'm not gonna get into other than to mention, I think it's highly important that you have a page for each focus area in your life, and with those focus areas, what you're gonna be focusing on, 
have a, a, a core purpose for what that focus area is, some goals, and some action items in, there, in those areas. So that way, whenever you are feeling sidetracked or you're feeling like you're gonna procrastinate or maybe you are procrastinating, you could jump in there and get a nice reminder of where you're at. So I have that with me all the time because it's in Notion. I've also started building out uh, rituals that I want to follow for the day. I borrowed this from the Full Focus Planner, which was something I think was really great. I built a couple of databases in here. So these are just inline databases that show my process through the day. And though I'm not able to really follow these too closely all the time because things are always changing, I have four kids and lots of different uh, variables that factor in, I can always go to these rituals and try to follow them the best possible way so that I have a process for my day and I don't feel lost because it's very easy for me to get sidetracked and then not be focusing on anything. So I can always go to a morning ritual, a workday startup, a midday, a workday shutdown, uh, or an evening ritual, whichever part of the day that I am at. So going back to Jer OS, I have assets, bills, contacts, daily log, expense log, interactions, my projects, tasks, and then the 2020 goal tracker, which I've updated to 2021. I guess I just didn't change the title there. And I'll go more into that in another video. So all of those are databases and some of them are tied into other databases in different ways. Uh, and I'll go into those uh, into more detail in future videos. Um, a lot of them are still pretty similar to past videos as well but uh, it's probably due time to make an update to some of those. The content calendar is the area where I keep track of videos that I'm working on for the different YouTube channels that I have. I have three different YouTube channels, this being one of them, and a lot of videos that I'm working on, everything from something in the idea stage all the way to videos that have been published, and I wanna make sure I can go back and uh, see any information that I have about that video. So all of that is here. I have the different YouTube channels right here with information about those channels, uh, quick links to things, uh, sponsor links and stuff like that. I also created a sponsors database, which makes it really easy for me to go and look and see which videos have a specific sponsor, because sometimes it's kind of hard to remember which video had what sponsor. And most of these aren't uh, really like, they're really affiliate programs that I mention in some of these videos, not so much sponsors, like they're paying me to make the video. Um, but it is good to know if I was gonna, if I needed to make a change to that affiliate program or it was no longer a valid affiliate program, I have a list of all the videos I can easily go and make updates to those links so I'm not wasting at all. Notebook. The notebook has had some major changes. I put out a video uh, mid to late last year on my notebook and I talked about how I had so many databases in there because I was afraid uh, of how I can get my data out of Notion. And that's still a concern. Getting your data out of Notion can be kind of a pain I was going to play around with Coda for a while. I tried to export all of my data from Notion so that I could just make a copy of it and play around in Coda. And the file that comes out of Notion was corrupt. I couldn't get it to open on a Mac or a PC. I couldn't get it to do anything. But I had to kind of just decide, you know what? Notion is the better overall experience for me. I've tried Coda, I've tried Airtable, I've tried Evernote, Todoist, a collection of those, and the overall best single application for me is Notion right now. And I know a lot of people are talking about Notion alternatives and, and whatnot, but right now Notion is working well for me. It might not be the fastest at everything, but it is a single place, a single point for me to have all of my information and everything that I'm working on. So I did change my notebooks to a notebooks master database that has all the things in it. And it is quite, uh, it is quite a database. But what I did was create individual pages here. So for example, if I go into uh, bookmarks, 
We can see bookmarks that I have linked up um, and in my uh, in my notebook there. And so I can easily access all of those. If I have ideas or some quotes or something like that, um, I can quickly go to them. So you can see I have my notebooks database. I have an authors, a books, and a podcast database. And the reason that I have those different databases is because the authors, books, and podcasts are things that I will often link to. Uh, so for example, there's podcasts that I listen to all the time. There's quotes from those podcasts that I want to save. And so if I go into the podcast and get a list of podcasts, I can not only see the name of the podcast and the genre of the podcast and even the author, uh, but what should be linked up in here and for some reason isn't is all of the quotes. I know that the quotes are linked up to the uh, specific author, so I guess I just need to link up the quotes as well. Things that I still need to work on, but nonetheless, that is how it works. So if I go into authors here, you can see I have the name of the author, the area, whether it's a, a, a um, podcaster or a, like a book author or something like that, like what kind of, um, you know, a speaker or something like that. Um, then I have the notebook uh, database link here, which is actually quotes. I just need to rename that. Um, these are the different quotes. And then I have the podcast that it's linked to. And then also uh, over here, if it's an author and not a podcaster, um, it, they're going to show up with the books that they have. Sometimes it's both. So it's nice. Actually, I need to add Derek Sivers podcast because he does have a podcast. So uh, both his books and podcast. So I have it set up that way so that I can easily link things together. If there's a quote that I couldn't remember, but I remember the author of the quote, I can easily go to it. If there's a quote I could remember, but I can't remember the author, easy for me to find all of that stuff. That is a system that I've been missing for a long time. And even though it's not all separate databases for my notebooks anymore, like I said, was making me more comfortable to have it set up that way, this is more manageable for me. And yes, getting this data out and maybe migrating back to Evernote or migrating to something else could potentially be a pain, but right now it's just the way that it works the best. And I have to be okay with that and not continuously chasing, uh, you know, what, what the potential in the future could be. I need something that works well now. And that's what Notion is for me. So I also have this section called garage where I keep my archives, my public pages, and then I'm, I'm testing out this, uh, this form for a website that you can embed. And then it fills uh, all of your entries into a Notion database, which is kind of cool. I'll talk more about that later because I did attempt using Notion as a website, making a website from Notion pages, and I had some issues with that. And so I've got a whole video planned talking about how to make a website utilizing Notion, even having your own custom domain name. JaredHill.com for a while was pointing to Notion until I ran into some issues that for me being a little bit more techie and being a web guy myself, I just, I couldn't handle, so I, I had to go back but uh, I still want to talk about it. I want to talk about how you could build a website using Notion, the different features that you can use and the things that you can do, but then some of the things that become troublesome and don't necessarily work too well. So I'll be making a video about that soon. But all of my public pages, like my Notion templates, uh, my calendar, that I can send people to to connect with me. My personal challenges, which is a list of a lot of challenges that I'm working on, achievements that I want to kind of unlock in life, things that I want to accomplish is under my personal challenges. Those are actually linked up on my website, jaredhill.com. If you wanted to go check it out, you can see a list of all of those and it is uh, a direct link to that Notion database. Um, so in my garage, it's kind of just where I put stuff that I don't necessarily know where I should put it. I don't want it all the way over uh, on the left-hand side in the menu so that my menu's long, so I put it in the garage. That's what we do, right, when we don't know where to put something. So a great place for it there. So that's how I'm using Notion right now. Uh, definitely have it broken up into different life areas and some of those connect. But the main thing is, is that I'm getting in here, I'm filling out my tasks, I'm filling out my projects and keeping things up to date. And I'm finding ways to make that faster for myself so Notion doesn't become a bottleneck uh, in my process because it can very easily bog you down if you don't have it set up right. So if you're wondering how to do that, how to set 
set stuff up like this. You could, of course, watch all of my previous uh, YouTube videos. I have a lot of Notion templates that I've got linked down below for you to check out. And then I also have my Notion course, uh, which is currently half off. So if you check out the link down in the description, you'll get the course half off and you'll be walked through this entire process of setting up databases, linking them together, uh, and building a task and a project system, building a, a contacts manager, and tying all of those things together. It's, it's a pretty good course, and I've had a lot of really great feedback over the last several months since the course launched. So if you have any questions at all, definitely ask down in the comment section below. I appreciate you being here and watching all the way to the end. So if you made it to the end, click that thumbs up so that I know that you did, and I hope to see you back in the next video. Take care.